Only yesterday uh, it was revealed uh, that the man who stabbed three men in Reading uh, back in June of last year uh, is in fact now uh, going to be sentenced to what is effectively lifetime in prison. But an awful lot of uh, um, a conversation yesterday was around why uh, he was able to actually make those people die, actually murder those people with a knife, uh, given what his criminal record was and given the fact that he was uh, at one point on a watch list of one kind uh, or another. So uh, let's have a listen, first of all, before we talk to Dr. Rakeem, uh, to Andrew Wales, who's David Wales' brother. David Wales was one of the victims uh, of this man's uh, attack back in uh, June in Reading. For us as a family, it's been devastating to lose our much-loved son, brother and uncle. We know that our lives and the lives of everyone who knew and loved David will never be the same. We love you, David. May you, James and Joe, now rest in peace. Kara Sidala uh, was sentenced to um, life effectively in prison. Let's talk to Dr. Rakeem uh, Assan. By the way, uh, Matt Hancock is up in the uh, House of Commons at the moment, uh, just before we go to, uh, to Rakeem. Um, but we're not going to go to that because that will probably be quite boring. He's answering questions from MPs uh, and, and we'll tell you if anything interesting happens. Uh, Rakeem, a very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. How are you? Yeah, very well indeed. Happy New Year. Thanks very much for uh, for talking to us. Um, no worries. Kyra Sadala, um, thankfully, I suppose you would say, uh, is not likely to be given an opportunity to do what he did ever again. Um, he's going to be held, um, presumably, uh, unless something t strange happens, for the rest of his life behind bars. Um, but you've written a report on, on foreign national Islamic terrorism in the UK. Um and this particular case really is a good example of what's gone wrong, isn't it? Well, absolutely. Uh, I'd make the point that the whole life prison sentence is, is welcome. Mm. But I think the big story here is the build-up to that uh, terrorist attack back in June 2020, where three park goers were stabbed to death by Kari Sardala in an act of Islamist terror. Mm. We're talking about a man who... Uh, firstly, he, he he came to you know he he sought uh, asylum in the UK, but he had a, a very serious record of criminality, which quite unbelievably included knife-related offences, uh, racially aggravated assault, uh, attacking an emergency worker. Uh, so people will quite rightly say, how was he allowed um, to remain in the UK, and then how was he allowed to be released from prison? because this attack just it took place just weeks after he was released from jail. Yeah. So for me, Mike, this is a fundamental systems failure. Yeah. And it's similar, isn't it, to some other cases, for example, the London Bridge attackers, uh, various others who have taken part in uh, the Manchester Arena bomber as well. People who have been uh, uh, under surveillance at one point or another, or people who have certainly been um, uh, attended by uh, the security forces, they've been watched for a period. But then for some reason, nobody watches them after a while. Well, I think that, as, as you've already mentioned, he was logged uh, uh, on the watch list uh, for the security services. Mm. The, the big problem here, and I think this is going to be a big part of the discussion, is how was he allowed to remain in the UK? Uh, this is someone who had a very serious uh, serious history of criminality, and he, he, he was essentially allowed to do what he did. And, of course, there, there, there have been, uh, you know, concerns raised over, you know, the sort of condition of uh, human rights in Libya. Mm. But I think that the discussion really needs to move in the direction of uh, whether we have prioritised the human rights of those who, who are dangerous mm. and have a history of breaking and disrespecting the rule of law. Have we prioritised the human rights of those over the collective broader safety of the law-abiding British public? Yes. I mean, I know certainly during the time when the London Bridge attacks uh, were going on, both of them, uh, you would have said that uh, there was something like 500 different uh, individuals under surveillance or on a watch list of one kind or another. Uh, the police have, have also said that at any given time they're kind of solving uh, and stopping attacks constantly. Um, do you think that's still the case uh, as we go through into the beginning of 2021? Well, I think as we go into 2021, uh, as, we, as, we, um, as, as we're here, we really need to see how different systems work. I think an important um, part of the Kari Sardala uh, case is uh, while he was in prison, he was known to interact with Omar Brooks, hmm. who's a radical preacher associated with al muhajirun Jaroon. So you have all these uh, you have all these various pressures, Mike, which do which do place a strain on um, 
you know, it places a strain on the, uh, the authorities' ability to prioritise national security. Mm. And that's something that we really need to pay attention to. Yes, absolutely right. And, I mean, is there any evidence? I mean, Priti Patel talks a good game, but, I mean, she still hasn't mm. really managed to stop the uh, the continuing arrival uh, of migrants coming on boats illegally from France. Uh, they're still landing uh, as, as recently as yesterday. Uh, I think 20 of them landed yesterday, about 100 of them the day before. You know, she's still incapable of stopping that, it seems to me. And I know that the Home Office would say, well, we're stopping more uh, of them that want to mm. come uh, and we're sending some back. But, you know, I've often said this. It's very difficult, isn't it, to know um, what the background is of some of these people? Well, I, th I think what's key here is that the, the UK government, it closes the gap between the rhetoric and reality. And as I've mentioned in, um, in my report, there are ways, there are pathways available to the UK government where it can, uh, it can introduce a tougher border security regime and, and curb forms of judicial activism, activism which are frustrating on this front, whilst respecting its international legal obligations. So the, the, I, I understand that the UK government is working, currently working on the, uh, uh, the Fair Borders Bill. Mm. There, there, are, there are ways that the existing system can be reformed in order to facilitate deportations. I think it's a matter of political will. Mm. Uh, I think for too long, polit uh, the pol British political classes, they, 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 they have been sleeping at the wheel on this front, if I'm being perfectly honest. And mm. I think if you're talking about the broader political culture, th there's there's been a, how do you say, that there's been a, they've overestimated the willingness of some people when it comes to integrating into mainstream liberal democratic culture. Mm. But what they've really underestimated are the potential threats which are carried by the development of extremist minded counter societies within our own territory. Sure. So there needs, to be, there needs to be a clean break from that kind of unhelpful and unhealthy thinking, Mike. And what about the sort of Shemima Begums of this world? We're waiting, uh, presumably, to see whether she ends up coming back to fight her case. Uh, but we also don't hear much these days about those camps um, that have emanated from what went on in the ISIS territories around Syria and Iraq and Turkey. I mean, what's what what is what is going on out there? Well, I mean, I'd make the point that right? this also, you know, the, the returnees from those kind of, um, you know, those conflict ridden territories, that in itself represents a very serious risk pool. I and mean, on top of that, when you have uh, people who have been convicted of terror related offences with known links with prescribed organisations such as Islamic State, Al Qaeda, Al Muhajirun, then you see that this is how, in a sense, that the job of keeping the country safe is increasingly more difficult. So for me, if you're talking about the post-Brexit project, mm. much of that has to be the UK government focusing on what is wrong with our existing systems and what kind of reform needs to take place in order to prioritise national security and public safety. Yes, I think that's absolutely right. Well, the first thing I think Pretty Patel should do is read your report, uh, Dr. Rakiba San. Thank you very much indeed uh, from the Centre on Radicalisation and Terrorism at the Henry Jackson Society, uh, giving an overview of where we are uh, currently and where we might be going in 2021. It would be nice, would it not? if we could get through a whole year without any sort of terrorist attacks of any kind whatsoever uh, on these shores. That really would be something to look forward to.